Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Today I would like to add a panel to the geometry editor with some controls so that we can highlight and isolate different parts of a geometry asset if it has multiple submeshes. I'll start by adding a new user control and fixing the namespaces. Set the design time data context to geometry editor. All I want to have for now is just a couple of checkboxes that are repeated for each submesh. So first we put everything in a scroll viewer. The part that has the list of checkboxes per submesh will be within an expander. This is because I'd like to be able to expand and collapse different parts of the user control later when we add more stuff in here. We bind the list of meshes to the item source property and I also use the number of meshes, or mesh count, for the alternation count. This is to index each mesh by its position in the list as you will see in a minute. For each mesh, we'll have a border that will change its background color if the user moves their mouse over that border. As I mentioned, we use the alternation index to give a number to each submesh, followed by the name of that submesh. I'm using the words mesh and submesh interchangeably. The point is that a geometry may consist of multiple parts, which I refer to by meshes or submeshes. In this context, they are the same thing. At the moment we don't have a name property for meshes, so we need to add it later, but let's finish this control first. I'll add a checkbox that can be used to highlight a submesh by giving it a different color. and another checkbox for hiding all submeshes, except the one for which this checkbox is checked. In other words, we are able to display only one submesh by isolating it. Now we need to add these three properties. The name property, is highlighted and is isolated properties. We also need to add these two event handlers in order to be able to build the application. I can already put this geometry detail view in the geometry editor. We made room for that on the left side in the previous episode. As you can see, when we load this character model, which has five submeshes, we see a list that represents each submesh. Of course, we don't see submesh names and the checkboxes don't do anything either, because we still need to add those properties. One small thing to fix is to align the checkboxes to the left side, so they don't stretch to the full width of the border. 
That way we can't accidentally interact with these checkboxes. Now I'll go ahead and add the properties in Mesh Renderer Vertex Data class. I just remembered that I never actually showed the code snippet that I'm using to write bindable properties, so I guess better late than never, here it is. You can save this somewhere and then add it to Visual Studio's code snippets in order to use it. Moving on, I'll add a property for isolating submeshes. Also, when we change the highlighting, we need to raise a property change event for diffuse property. And then for the diffuse brush, if this submesh is highlighted, we return orange. Otherwise, we return the default diffuse brush. Finally, we need to add the name property. Now we can use the mesh name when we create... Uh, oh, we don't have a name property in mesh class either. Okay, let's add it here in mesh class and fill it in when we are reading the geometry data. While I'm here, let me also generate correct file names for the geometry assets. This is to fix that issue that we had in the last video, where two objects from the FBX file got the same file name, which resulted in one file being overwritten by the other. Here, if we have just one object to save, then we only use the FBX's file name. If the FBX file contains multiple objects, we append the file name with an underscore followed by either the LOD group name or the mesh name, depending on whether or not the object had multiple LODs. Now that we added the name property for each mesh, we also need to save it along with other mesh data and also read it when we load the geometry asset. Going back to the geometry editor, we see that we can use each mesh's name. So let me run the editor and check if that worked. Obviously we need to re-import our FBX files because we changed the geometry data format by adding the name field in here. Now we have the two LOD groups and they no longer overwrite each other. And we can also see the mesh names next to each submesh in the geometry details on the left side. Next, I'd like to write the event handlers for the checkboxes. These aren't that complicated, so for the highlighting we first turn off is highlighted property for all submeshes, and then we only turn it on for the submesh for which the checkbox was checked. We can do this by getting the data context of the checkbox, which gives us the mesh renderer vertex data and we can then set its is highlighted property. Isolating submeshes is similar, except now we need to set the geometry with the index of the submesh we want to display. Remember we have this index here, which if set will only display one of the submeshes. Otherwise all submeshes are displayed. In order to be able to call this method, we need access to the geometry view. I'll abuse the tag property for this and set its value to point to the geometry view.
Then we can access the geometry view in our event handler and call set geometry with the index of the submesh that we want to be displayed. Now you can see that when I click on these checkboxes, the corresponding submesh is highlighted or displayed in isolation. Finally, I need to reset its highlighted property for primitive meshes because they are displayed with textures and if we ever had a primitive mesh with multiple LODs, we might want to reset each LOD to display the correct texture. None of this will matter when we have our native graphics renderer up and running, but for now it needs some attention to keep it working correctly. I'll stop here for today, although that makes this a shorter video than we normally do. The reason is that I'll be working on the C++ geometry processing part next and I wouldn't want to mix the green and red videos. So next time I'm going to prepare our geometry so that it can be sent to the engine. Thank you for joining me today and I'll see you soon next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!